Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Windows Business Weekly. My name is Russell Smith and today I'm going to be talking about Windows 10 and joining it to an Azure Active Directory domain. So stay tuned. So let's start by talking a little bit about what is Azure Active Directory. Now you're probably familiar with Windows Server Active Directory. Now this is the uh, Active Directory system that's been available since Windows 2000. And basically it's an ident identity management system. So it enables you to determine who your users are uh, and to authenticate them and authorize them to use particular services on your network. So at the very simplest level, it may be accessing file servers and it centralizes all of that information so that you can easily manage user accounts. So this works by having one or more domain controllers. Basically, uh, these are the servers that authorize and authenticate users so that they can access services. Now, Azure Active Directory is the identity management service that Microsoft has developed for the cloud. Now, essentially, it's designed for cloud-first applications, but you can extend your Windows Server Active Directory to also work in conjunction with Azure Active Directory if you want the two systems to work together. And this is called a hybrid scenario when you have your on-premises systems working uh, in tangent with the uh, cloud services that Microsoft are offering with Azure. Now, Windows 10 is different from previous versions of Windows in that while you can still join a device to a Windows Server Active Directory domain. The default option now for Windows 10 Enterprise, at least with the later versions or the more recent versions of the operating system, is that you can join Windows directly to Azure Active Directory instead of, for instance, Windows Server uh, Active Directory. The question is, why would you actually want to do that? So probably for most organizations, uh, at least certainly for smaller organizations, the main uh, place where you're going to come across Azure Active Directory is things like Office 365 and Microsoft 365. So Azure Active Directory is the identity management system behind Office 365. So when you log into Office 365, you log in with what Microsoft call a work or school account. Now, actually, that is, uh, of course, an Azure Active Directory account. Now, Azure Active Directory, while it's the identity management system behind 365, Microsoft and Office, you can also use it completely standalone. For instance, if you have cloud-born apps, you might use Azure AD uh, to authenticate your users. Uh, you, know, you don't have to necessarily be using Office or Microsoft 365 to be working with Azure Active Directory. Now, of course, to use Office 365, you don't necessarily have to join Windows 10 to an Azure AD domain. It's not necessary to do, but there are some advantages for doing this. So if you um, join a Windows 10 device to Azure Active Directory, you get single sign-on support for both cloud and on-premise applications. So what that means is that users log in once to Windows 10, and then they can automatically be authorized to Office 365 services or on-premise services without having to provide their password or their PIN or their biometric uh, identification again in order to log into services. So it just makes it easier for users and for administrators. Now, there are two ways you can work with uh, Office 365 or Azure Active Directory and Windows 10. You can either join Windows 10 to your Azure AD domain or you can just register a device. And there are slight differences between these two things. So 
If you join an, a, a Windows 10 device to Azure Active Directory, you get the full line of support. So you get things like uh, uh, conditional access policies, you get the ability to manage it using uh, mobile device management, you get things like enterprise state roaming, you get things like self uh, resets, uh, self password uh, resets, so users can reset their own passwords without uh, bothering the help desk, assuming you have an Active Directory plan that includes those features. For instance, self password resets are not included in very basic uh, Active Directory plans. You need to have uh, the, uh, the higher levels of those plans in order to access those features. Enterprise state roaming is also a useful feature where user settings follow them around. So they can log into any Windows 10 device and their settings follow them around, much like happens with a Microsoft account. If you're a consumer and you log into Windows using a Microsoft account, you will have noticed that various settings follow you around from device to device. Uh, that's all very well, and that's like a fully managed scenario, if you like, with a domain join to Azure Active Directory from Windows 10. Now, a registered device is something a little bit different. And the main difference here is that you don't log into the device with your organizational work or school account. You log in using a local account, a local account, or a Microsoft account, an MSA. And then you have to log in uh, again with uh, your office or work or school account. Uh, but once you've registered the device, in principle, Windows will remember your office account, your Azure AD account, and most of the time it will log you in automatically to those services. So you get single sign-on for the cloud services, but not for your on-premise services. So it's a little bit different. So here there are two accounts to manage with a registered device. The local account that you use to log into Windows and the work or school account that you use to log into Azure Active Directory. Uh, that's with a registered device. With a domain joined dev device, when you see the Windows 10 lock screen, you log in directly to Windows 10 with your work or school Azure AD account. And that's it. You've only got one account to worry about. So there's quite a big difference between those two concepts. So the other interesting thing about registered devices is that while a domain join device can only be something that is using Windows 10, it's not supported on Windows 7 or Windows 8 or any other operating system, a registered device can be Windows 10, it can be Android, it can be iOS, or it can be macOS. So there's a wider range of devices that can be registered. Now, registered devices are better for bring your own device scenarios where users actually own their own devices, but they still want to organize, sorry, to access organizational resources. And organizations can also manage those devices if they enroll in uh, Microsoft Intune, for instance. Uh, they can also apply uh, mobile application management if they just want to manage applications rather than the device itself. But it's a bit more of a loosely managed scenario. Uh, and maybe that's something, of course, that is more appropriate for bring your own device scenarios. So what else uh, important can I tell you about this? So I guess the main thing is about how you log on and how many different accounts you're going to manage. Uh, before you can join a, a Windows 10 device to Azure Active Directory, you need to make sure that it's enabled in your Azure Active Directory tenant. So you can either enable all users to join uh, devices to the domain, or you can select a particular group of users or just list of users, however you like. And you can also limit the number of devices that any user is allowed to join to a particular domain. So those settings need to be uh, checked before you try to actually perform a domain join. When you go about performing a domain join, it's really very simple. As long as everything's set up in Azure Active Directory, and it should be by default, then all you really need to do is when you get to the Microsoft uh, sign-in page when you're installing Windows 10 for the first time, you just put in your work or school accounts, provide a password, 
and that is it. And then the rest of the installation process for Windows 10 is the same as it would be if you were joining a domain or using a local account. Um, now, if you want to join uh, Windows 10 uh, to an a Azure AD domain, you can do it from uh, the out-of-box experience setup, uh, or you can do it from the settings app in Windows 10 after Windows 10 has been installed. You can also use Windows Autopilot, or you can also use what the Microsoft call it, I've forgotten. Uh, bulk installation, I think it's called, where you use a uh, provisioning package uh, to install Windows 10. Now, one disadvantage, and it might be just uh, worth noting this, is that if you use the method that I've just described, the out-of-box experience, or for instance, the settings app to join a Windows 10 device to an Azure AD domain, the user doing the join-in that's called the primary user in, in Microsoft speak, will be automatically become a local administrator on that device. Um, and that, of course, for enterprises is maybe not an ideal uh, scenario. Now, the only way uh, around that, at least, you know, to automatically get around that without fiddling around with the membership of the local administrators group after the fact, is to either use Windows Autopilot or to use the bulk installation method. Uh, so there are ways around that, but uh, if you use uh, the domain join through the settings app or when you're doing it during the Windows 10 installation uh, process, that user will become a local administrator on that box. So that's definitely something worth understanding. So, if you want to make life easier for your users and easier account management, then certainly you should think about joining your Windows 10 devices to your Azure Active Directory domain if you're all in with Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Uh, if you have a bring your own device scenario, then I recap again that maybe registering with Active, uh, Azure Active Directory might be a better option and because it still leaves users with some control over their devices. It's not a completely managed device uh, like you get with a domain join. But this is now the default option when you're installing Windows 10 Enterprise, which is quite interesting. Uh, you know, joining a Windows Server Active Directory domain has now kind of been pushed down into the corner and it says, you know, uh, domain join instead, and what this means is Windows Server Active Directory. If you want to use a local account, Microsoft is making it even harder, of course. They would prefer that you use either a work or school account from Azure or that you're using a Microsoft account. So whether you like that or not, of course, uh, depends on many different things. So uh, that's it for this week. So uh, if you're interested in uh, how to integrate your Windows 10 devices into your Office 365 or your Microsoft 365 tenant, do have a look at that. I'll put in the show notes, uh, hopefully some links to some further information about how you actually go about doing that and some more technical details on the domain join process. Okay, that's it for this week and hope to catch you on Windows Business Weekly uh, next week.